I'm not funny. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm really not funny. But I'll try to make this humorous. Thank you. All right, well, awesome. All right, we're up and running. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Action Cable. This is just a lightning talk. It's not a full uh, talk, so I won't be building a full app with it. Um, my name's Garrett. You can reach me at these places. This is my first tech talk. I've been coding for about eight or nine months now. Professional musician, former teacher. All right, so Action Cable. What is it? Uh, Action Cable is the biggest addition to Rails 5. Uh, it's a WebSocket framework that allows real-time additions to your real app. It also adds a whole bunch of new Ruby and JavaScript files to your program. I just said this is a lightning talk. I'll be giving another talk next month, um, either a lightning or a full talk, and actually build something out with Action Cable. This talk is going to go an overview over what things you're going to find in it, but not build a whole application in front of you. I'll divide it into three parts. Oh, wait. I want to use this. Terms, code, and show you an example. So the first thing, if you're not familiar with real-time uh, web applications, is you need to know what WebSockets are. WebSockets is a protocol providing full duplex communication channels over a single connection. WebSockets allow data to be sent back and forth between a server and any number of clients while keeping the connection open. And Action Cable calls the, uh, the client of the connection a consumer. So what the heck is full duplex? Uh, well, full duplex refers to the transmission of data in two directions simultaneously. So a great example of that is a telephone. So one person can be talking on one side while the other one's talking at the same side and it overlaps. A half duplex example would be a walkie-talkie where only one person can talk at once. The web sockets are full duplex. Lots can happen all at the same time. I think it's cool. Uh, another common term you're going to see a lot uh, with the Rails 5 app is pub subs. Sometimes you'll see it look like this, and it stands for publisher subscriber. Uh, pub subs are a messaging pattern where the sender, called a publisher, sends a message over a channel to an undefined amount of receivers called subscribers. A publisher doesn't necessarily need to know anything about the subscribers of the channel, and the subscribers don't necessarily need to know anything about the publisher. Uh, let's put channels up there too. I'm going to talk a lot about channels. Uh, just a minute ago, I mentioned the word consumer. Um, when, the, uh, when the consumer is subscribed to a channel, they act as a subscriber. The connection between the subscriber and the channel is called a subscription. A consumer can act as a subscriber to a given channel any number of times. The reason I'm going over all these ways of saying subscribe and consumer is that it's just very common language to talk about this. And if, when you read the action table uh, repo, he uses these terms all over the place. They're also right in the code. So uh, remember, uh, a client of a WebSocket connection is called a consumer. Boom. All right. Each action cable channel can stream zero or more broadcastings. A broadcasting is a pub sub link where anything transmitted by the publisher is sent directly to the channel's subscribers who are streaming that exact broadcasting. If you haven't dealt with a lot of real-time updates in a web application before, a lot of this will sound new, so just to quickly review, WebSockets are the protocol providing the full duplex communication channels. Pub subs or publisher subscriber simply refers to the data transfer pattern. And broadcasting is when a publisher sends data over those channels to be consumed by a consumer. Check out the repo. There's a terminology section in there as well that gets actually much more elaborate than this. And now let's look at some code. Uh, I don't have, like I mentioned, we don't have time enough to build a full app. So the code section of this talk will be an overview of all the new action cable files that you'll find in your new Rails 5 app and some basics on communicating over your WebSocket connections. But first, be warned. Uh, when you decide to sit down with Action Cable Tutorial, try to find the most recent demos you can. Action Cable's alpha version came out about eight months ago. Um, and since then, there have been major syntax dependency and setup changes. Uh, the examples I'm going to show you are Rails 5 Beta 2 examples with one generated channel. This is the most, what it looks like right at this moment. Not 10 days ago. All right, so here's our new app. Get in there and generate a meetup channel. The new channel generator requires a name for the channel and you can optionally add actions, so it will just show up as methods within that channel. 
And so some of the files you're going to see, uh, starting on the server side, we have two new directories in our main app folder. And by the way, once again, these are just the directories and files related to Action Cable. There's a lot of other Rails 5 goodness. I'm not going over all of it. Uh, jobs are not new, uh, but now there's a default jobs directory with an application job file for shared logic. Uh, application Cable does not specifically require you to use jobs, uh, but it will become very useful when dealing with asynchronous behavior that the Action Cable's WebSocket connections gives you. Uh, jobs handle any, uh, can handle anything being chopped into small pieces that might need to be run in parallel with your program. You might start using them a little bit more if you're doing real-time updates. Opening up the channels folder in its child directory, you find three new Ruby files. Channel, connection, and meetup channel. The connection RB is where you set up authorization for an incoming connection request. It comes looking like this, but you'll probably have to alter it. Uh, this might be a standard uh, implementation uh, that, that you might put in. Sorry that's so small. Uh, let's look at the top three lines. Application cable is a module. Its connection class inherits from some Rails goodness. You will need some kind of identified by statement. Uh, this method is a connection identifier that can be used to find the specific connection again or later on. Um, of course, this, for this example to work, you would have had to set up authentication, authentication somewhere in your program previously. It doesn't need to be current user. It could be user ID. It could be a UUID. You can really put anything here. Uh, the other uh, new file in the application cable directory is the channel RB. This is the place where you put shared logic between your channels. Uh, it comes out of the box looking like this. It's unlikely you're going to do too much with this unless you're building something pretty complex. If you're just playing around and building a demo app or just using maybe one channel, um, you probably won't, put, you won't need shared logic. So this will, this will pretty much stay the same. Uh, that leaves the meetup channel RB. This is the file that our channel generator created. It comes with a subscribe and an unsubscribe method. A subscribe will get triggered when a client-side subscription is initiated. Unsubscribe when the client leaves. Uh, you're not required to implement these methods exactly. They come with it. What you are required to do is to use the stream from right here. That will set you up with a, a WebSocket connection to whatever string you pass it, which can take like a user ID or something to make it specific for the user. Um, so let's look at an example. Uh, here, follow doesn't have any particular magic. You just have to call it by name on the client side. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, notice I have uncommented stream from and just have a, a meetup channel. So anyone that hits this follow will all be in the same streaming the same uh, connection. And those are a really quick overview of the server side action cable files you'll find. Let's go over to the client side. Uh, there's two new coffee script files, a cable coffee and a meetup coffee. Uh, the meetup file was created by our generator. Of course, you can change these to JavaScript and ES6 if you desire, but they come as CoffeeScript. Look at the cable coffee first. Uh, by default, your Rails 5 app will come with Action Cable turned off. The cable coffee file, in addition to your routes RB, is where you'll go to turn it on. So all you do is uncomment these last two lines. Uh, you'll notice it's setting up a global app object, assigning it if it's not been assigned, and putting some magic into the cable property of the app. At the very bottom line, your routes RB, you uncomment that to turn on the cable as well. That's pretty much everything you're going to do with the cable coffee unless you're tying in some other files. So that's that. Um, so let's take a peek and type the meetup coffee. You guessed it, our generator created this one. That's pretty small. I know it's like, sorry, this is so small. Uh, those comments are really useful. There's a lot of comments I've sort of X'd out. Some are already outdated when you generate your app. I'm sure those will be updated once 5 actually has its full release. Uh, let's take a close look at two of these functions. These are the three functions that come with any channel that you generate. Uh, the connected function, uh, it would call immediately when your client establishes a successful connection. This is a great place to do things like this, maybe. Uh, you could make a, a direct call to the server. You could allocate a job to create something in your database. Uh, you could hit other uh, JavaScript functions like I'm doing here. Um, there's no established correct way to use this. 
uh, to, to put code into this file yet. Probably hitting other JavaScript functions is the best call, but just make it look clean and maybe some kind of standard way will evolve. Uh, the receive function is, is where the client side half that, uh, is where the client side half of your cable gets data from the server. So the data parameter represents a JSON object, and, but how is the client getting information from the server? I haven't really said this yet. So let's jump back into some Ruby. Uh, you could put uh, this, this call really anywhere, uh, but you, uh, what, to do it, you need to broadcast to that channel. This might be in the meetup channel RB. Um, it might be in a special job. It might even be in a specialized controller handling some special views for your channel if you're doing chat rooms, whatever you want. Um, so action cable server broadcast right here takes two arguments. The first is a string that matches that exact broadcasting. Uh, and the second is optional, and it's just a hash of whatever data you want to pass up. So in the receive function, you might receive that data like this. I personally like using a switch statement here to identify, uh, identify desired actions. Obviously, we only have one action right now, so it doesn't make too much sense. But if I wanted to do other things other than schedule, I could just add another line here. So once again, we have an action, a date, and a time. And that's just right in that data object. All right, so vice versa, the other way around. I was banking on there being delicious tacos here. I'm sort of surprised it was pizza, but maybe delicious tacos will come back. So if you're making a call from the client side to the server, amazingly, uh, you'll notice I have not written an AJAX request. Uh, Rails is giving you a magic perform word that connects you directly to the meetup channel. This is it as CoffeeScript. This is it as JavaScript. You don't need to make this call right within your, um, your coffee file, your meetup coffee file. You can make it from a different JavaScript file. Um, the key, of course, is just specifying the exact channel, Ruby channel name, right here off of app. Yeah, you can see right here, it will call meetup channel. If you didn't pass this in, then you wouldn't need to pass in a, a data. Cool. All right, there's one more file. That's the client side file. So there's one more file that you'll get, you need to keep an eye on. That's in your config. Uh, it comes with a cable YAML. By default, Action Cable uses Redis pub subs for handling its WebSockets connections. Happily, they abstracted that out. Um, it still comes with default, but you can set it up to use Postgres pub subs. It doesn't need to be Redis. Uh, if you haven't used Redis before, go ahead and install it. Redis only works with Ruby versions 2.2.2 and higher. As of this moment, this is what the cable YAML now looks like, but its contents and its location have changed pretty often. Uh, you might have to experiment when you're, when you're deploying your app locally or in production. Uh, this can be a major point of pain, but I'm going to walk you through it next month with however it's set up a month from now. Be really careful if you're trying to do this on your own, because you might get some really weird errors, but it should be, this used to be in a different file somewhere else, and they keep changing the configuration. Uh, more to watch out for. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that there have been some major dependency changes. I just mentioned you can use uh, Postgres instead of Redis. Uh, one recent enhancement is that Action Cable no longer ties into Event Machine. Uh, this means that you only need to start one multi-threaded server in your console when developing before you had to start two different servers, which meant setting up a config roo, which made it a lot more complicated. Uh, Rails 5 now comes packaged with Puma and not WebRick, so you just start up the default. However, you will need to start up the Redis server for the WebSocket connections to work. So unless you've hooked that in just to be open, when you open up your computer, you'll need to open up two shells, one with Redis server, one with Rails server. Cool. That's the quick overview. Here are all the files that we just went over that got added in with the Rails 5 app. On the client side, we have a meetup coffee and a cable coffee. On the server side, we have a channel RB, a connection RB, and a meetup channel. And we have a camel YAML for configuration. Here are the files that got generated by our generator. If we hadn't done that, those wouldn't be here. And everything would be turned off. All right, here's a bunch of links. If you want to dive deeper, there's a lot of stuff out there. Like I said, try and look at the most recent. Uh, DHH did a great video on December 20th when it was Rails 5 Beta 1. That's pretty close to how it's implemented now, except for that cable YAML. Um, I'll link post these slides in Tech404's Ruby and Rails group in the next couple days so you can have access to this if you want to check out these links. Last but not least, I'm just going to show you a little example 
The example I'm gonna show you is actually the app that he builds in that slide, and I've added a couple little things to it. So, what we need to do, I'm gonna just drag these things over there. Actually, I'm not gonna drag these things over there. Except that this isn't showing on my side. Huh. Let's see if that fixes it. Great. All right. So here's my shell. Let's get Redis going. Cool. So that's going. All right. We have two different sessions open. One's a normal session. One's an incognito. The only way to test this, of course, is you can't do it just when two normal browsers, one has to be incognito. Oops. All right, you can reach me here. This is just local, by the way. All right, so you can see we have two different sessions up. Type something in one, it immediately shows up in the other in real time. Jump over to the at rug at meetup.com user. Boom. So, uh, um, if you'd like to see, I didn't put a link for it but I made a Battleship app that uses application, uh, pardon me, action cable to play over mu uh, multiplayer. Um, it is this. You can check it out if you want. If you want to see a live example. It is possible to get up into Heroku. Some people might say you need to do DigitalOcean. I had to verify my credit card number, but I didn't have to pay. And it still works in Heroku with a free account. Oops, I misspelled Heroku app. All right. You get the idea. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody has questions, am I, can I open up for questions or you can ask me later? Yes, next month I will have time to add, uh, answer questions or if you come and hang out, I can answer whatever questions you have about Action Cable later on tonight. There's one lightning talk left. Thank you very much. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.